Hey, what is going on guys? Expert Fusion here and today we are kind of doing an extension to our review of The Walking Dead Season 8 Episode 1 which is titled Mercy and I just had a lot more I want to talk about and I wanted to do in a separate video and what I want to talk about is the hate revolving the episode because surprisingly enough this episode has been very hated overall by the community and I'm really confused as to why. And, you know, obviously I have, you know, reasonings. Because, like I said, I had a few problems with the episode, but it's not, like, you know, anything huge. I still thought it was a very solid episode, but people are saying it's the worst episode of the series. And I'm just like, what? Like, they're giving it one star, two stars, three stars on IMDb. You know, all these different reviews are coming out. People are saying it was trash. And then you obviously have the, the real fans who, you know actually use their brain and think about it i mean i'm not saying you're not allowed to not like the episode because you're not you know you're allowed to have your critique career criticisms and such but the hate for this episode is just extreme and just unreasonable is what i'm trying to say here so the major complaints i'm hearing about this episode and by the way there's some call of duty world war 2 gameplay in the background i didn't know what else to put in the background so i just put some world war 2 gameplay whatever it doesn't matter just enjoy it i don't care <laughs> Um, but the major complaints, I'm going to go over is a few different things. There's like five different things. So starting off, there's people complaining about unrealistic shooting or people missing too much, conveniently missing their shots and oh, this happening for a lot of people. And I don't see why people are questioning that. You just have to use your fucking brain. So first of all, People are saying, why the hell didn't Rick just shoot Negan? Or why didn't anybody just shoot Negan right when they got there? Well, they were. that's not their plan. You have to realize. Now, that's something I complained about. I think it needs to be more clear as to what their plan is. Because you have dumbasses, like people who say this type of stuff. They don't actually know what's happening. But their plan is not to just go in there and kill Negan. Even though Rick says a bunch of times he's going to kill Negan, that's not what he wants to do right now. What he wants to do is he wants to get them trapped in with the walkers so they can go to the other communities and kill them all. But they were giving them an ultimatum saying if anybody wants to surrender, they will surrender, and then he's going to fucking kill Negan, like he said. But they didn't surrender, so he's not going to kill Negan. You know what he's going to do? He's going to fuck with him and toy with him. And even at the end of the season, he's not going to kill Negan. He's still going to do what he did in the comics. He's going to keep him alive because he wants him to suffer. He doesn't think that killing him is, is going to do justice, basically. That's kind of what Rick's thinking. So Rick's toying with him. Rick wants... Honestly, I think Rick is thinking about fucking tying him up and torturing him. That's what I think he has in his mind. He took the picture of the destroyed sanctuary with the Polaroid. That's one example. He is mocking him and using the same things he said to him when he killed Glenn and Abraham. Saying the same things back to him like, you're going to make me count and then counting down. And when he started shooting, he was not shooting generally at Negan. When he started shooting, he was shooting around Negan and at the windows and such. He was trying to scare them, get them back inside and such. You can see that, that, but you can also see it as if he was shooting at Negan, which is also possible because he did actually hit Negan in the leg. He was shot in the leg. I don't know if that was from Rick exactly. It could have been from someone else. But he was limping, so he did get hurt in the leg, whether that be glass coming down and stabbing into his leg or a bullet into his leg. I don't know what it is exactly. We'll figure out eventually. But um, that did happen, and... So obviously someone did hit him, but it literally Rick took like a second or two to pull up his gun and start shooting. You don't do that instantaneously. You have time to jump out of the way, and that's what Rick, uh, Negan did. He jumped to cover, and everyone else did too. Everyone else went inside, actually. Negan didn't go inside. He jumped to cover and stayed out there, and it was still in cover, and Rick tried to still shoot at him, but guess what? He was behind cover. So when people say Rick shot like 100 bullets at him and missed all 100 of them, that's bullshit. He might have shot a good amount of ammo at him, yeah. But not all of them were misses. Most of them were just shooting, you know, cover that were around him. Or purposely shooting around him. Or just shooting cover because he's trying to intimidate him, scare him out of there. He was shooting bulletproof, sh a sheet of bulletproof metal. You really expect somehow for him to just magically kill him through the bulletproof metal? I, I don't know. That's one complaint people had. And that complaint is just bullshit. And they also were talking... About um, later on in the episode when Carol and the Kingdomers were attacking that outpost and there was a guy behind a car and they were shooting at him and no one was hitting the guy. First of all, they started shooting at him and he got the cover. That's 
you behind cover. They're not going to be able to hit him perfectly. Like this, the same people who are saying stuff like this, who are saying these complaints, are probably the same people who have never shot a gun in their life and are basing their gun knowledge off a of Call of Duty. Now, I haven't really shot too many guns in my life. I've shot like one or two, and they're not like assault rifles, so I don't know exactly how assault rifles feel exactly, or even SMGs or whatever. But I know from seeing videos and hearing it from other people, they have a good amount of recoil. It's not like Call of Duty where you're shooting and there's not much recoil. Obviously, a video game is going to be a lot different than a movie or a TV show. I mean, real life, actually. But The Walking Dead is trying to base it off real life. The guns have recoil. So, obviously, it's going to be hard to shoot somebody, especially from a distance, especially a small target from a distance who's behind cover. Like, why do you think, like, if every gun had pinpoint accuracy... Wars would would end really quickly. Like battles, they would not be at stalemates in any type of battle. They would go over like like that. Obviously, new technology like tanks and and vehicles obviously change it up. But when it's just a gunfight with guns, I mean, people are saying Rick had a fully automatic assault rifle. He didn't even have an assault rifle. That was an MP5 SMG gun or submachine gun. My bad, my bad. I said it wrong. But you know, you know what I mean. It's a it's a short quarter close quarter combat gun now why is rick using that in this fight i don't fucking know why is he using the ak-47 i don't even think he has the ak-47 anymore now i'm thinking about it i'm pretty sure rick and the group or negan stole it i don't know but why was he using that you know i, I don't know that's one thing that i had to complain about i wish they would make it clear but i'm not going to complain thing it's bad writing i'm just going to say they kind of leave too many things out and kind of make us infer it, but I'm fine with inferring it because it's not that hard to infer it. It's just I don't want to see all these dumbasses complaining about the episode when they don't even have the full idea as to what's going on. Like, I just, I don't know. People also complaining, why the hell did Father Gabriel get out to go save Gregory? That was dumb. Someone actually said that that was bad writing. How the fuck is Father Gabriel getting out to save Gregory bad writing? Okay, first of all, if that was a dumb decision by somebody, that's not bad writing. Dumb decisions, people don't understand this. Dumb decisions is not equal bad writing. Just because somebody makes a decision in a movie or TV show that you don't like, it's not bad writing. It's not. People make bad decisions all the time in real life. Now, when they don't specify as to why they make that decision, yeah, it could, it could kind of piss people off because they want to know why. But it's pretty fucking easy to infer it in this situation just fucking use your brain father gabriel is a priest he's a good person he doesn't want people to die he only kills when he has to like that savior he had to kill gregory is not a savior gregory is part of the hilltop he doesn't know gregory that much he doesn't know that he's a dick and an asshole all he knows is that he is part of this uh, the hilltop colony he's a leader of the hilltop colony and he is a coward and being interrogated by Nian and forcefully coming out and saying go back home or else he will not have a home to do it basically he just doesn't want them to fight father gabriel's a good person i would understand if it was rick going back to save him even then it would be like if they had a justified reason it's fine but uh, no i don't know rick wouldn't have saved him no but it's father gabriel father gabriel's a good person people are saying he's dumb and stupid i'm sorry he's being a good person you know do i think it was a smart decision would i have done the same thing probably not but that just because you wouldn't do the same thing does not equal bad writing. That's just not what it has. That's just that's not how it works. I just I don't understand people. People are saying The Walking Dead sucks now. It's terrible. They said it's pointless action. They said this episode was jumbled up and slow and bad writing. I just I don't understand. Honestly, well, the reason is the show is getting so popular as time goes on. So popular. That there's just more and more complainers. Like I've realized the newer episodes are getting so much more hate. And so much more praise at the same time because there's more people watching. It's just how everything works. The more something, more attention something gets, the more hate it's going to get, as well as more praise. It's going to get both. But yeah, so, you know, I, I, I just, I'm really scared for the rest of the season because I, I think I'm going to enjoy the rest of the season. I definitely think I will, but I'm scared about how the fans are going to take the rest of the season because this episode is. It's not going to be the best episode of the season by any stretch. I don't think so. But it's definitely a kind of a, a key as to where the directing and the and the writing is going to go for the rest of the season. I mean, it could be different. Greg Nicotero was the director of this episode. So if you didn't like the directing, which was one thing I didn't like that much. Well, actually, no, it was more of the editing I didn't like that much. Directing was, I don't know, I, some of the shots I didn't like too much. Which is surprising because it's Greg Nicotero and he directed some of the best episodes out there so it was really surprising to me 
Um, the writing was fine. It's just they, they do leave out some things. And they leave them out just because they want to speed up the episodes. Because people complained last season it was too slow. But now you come to this season and it's too fast. And I'm not going to complain about that. But I'm just saying it would be nice for them to actually give us information about what is happening. Why they're doing it. Instead of making us infer on our own. But I don't have a problem with doing that at the same time. If you, you understand what I mean. I don't have a problem with doing it, but I, it would be nice if they were to make, you know, add in, tell us what's happening and tell us why it's happening. You know what I mean? I, I just I just feel like that's something that is, you know, it's obvious. But it's something that The Walking Dead hasn't really struggled with in the past at all. And I, never, I don't think it's a problem necessarily. I think it's only a problem because the fans are stupid. Honestly, a lot of the fan base is young for The Walking Dead. It's got a pretty high... Or pretty young fan base, and um, I just because it's zombies and zombies, it's just very appealing to younger people. It's also got a pretty adult fan base, though. Don't get me wrong, but it definitely has a ton of kids watching it. And obviously, when you're younger, you're gonna be you know not as wise, not as understanding. And there's people who have never went in a writing class in their life. They don't know the first clue about good storytelling and good writing. Yet they critique it and say it's terrible writing. Look, if you don't know what writing is, then just don't fucking critique it. I'm sorry, but that's the philosophy I've lived by forever. If you don't, if you don't have experience in something, you don't have knowledge on it. You should not be, you should not be critiquing or or trying to, you know, change their opinion on it. It's like if you don't play football, you don't have any interest in football. Yet you watch a game of football and you're critiquing every little thing they do. You're like, oh, he should have done this. Oh, he should have done that. It's like, well, you don't even know what the fuck you're doing. So, you know, if you, look, if you can't do it any better, then I don't think that you should be saying it at all. That's honestly how I live by. And I think that's a really good philosophy to live by because if I'm going to critique something, I'm going to give feedback. I'm not going to just say it's shit. No, I'm going to give feedback and say what they could have done better and, you know, actually help out. And I've actually had experience in this type of shit. So I actually kind of have you know sort of a valid opinion i guess you can say but then you got people who first of all have never even watched much of the walking dead they might come to watch one or two episodes and they say the writing is shit why isn't they shooting the guy why aren't they shooting negan oh they don't infer it for themselves i don't know i think they're just lazy and they just want everything to be given to them i don't know i'm hoping the rest of the season decides to be more clear about what it's doing so the fan base won't be retarded and not know what they're you know what they're watching basically hopefully you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next one peace out